series. So in this video we are going to see the functional areas of the cerebral hemisphere. Basically the functional areas are divided into motor areas, sensory areas and psychical areas and association areas. So the motor areas are primary motor area, pre-motor area, prefrontal cortex and frontal eye field. So these motor areas are spread along the frontal lobe. This is the frontal lobe. Here this is the precentral gyrus. So the precentral gyrus shows area number 4. The numbering of these functional areas is based on Broadman's classification. So he has classified around 52 areas in the cerebral cortex. So the area number 4 is representing the primary motor area. This is found in the precentral gyrus. So here the afferents are coming from the uh, ventral uh, nuclei of the thalamus, especially the anterior and lateral uh, portion of the ventral nucleus of thalamus and also it receives afferents from the ipsilateral corpus striatum, contralateral cerebellum. These are the afferents. And uh, area number 4 along with the area number 6 uh, which is the premotor area, they uh, form the fibers like corticonuclear, corticobulbar and corticospinal uh, tracts. So those fibers are the efferents coming from the motor as well as the premotor area. Any uh, the representation of the body here, it is uh, invertedly represented called as motor homunculus. Here, the, this complete thing is a precentral gyrus. The area of representation is uh, depending on the skill of the muscle but not on the size of the muscle. So the representation of the area involved in uh, uh, skilled movements, they have larger area of representation when compared to the size of the muscle. So in the precentral gyrus, the lower and uh, the representation is uh, upside down, it is called inverted homunculus in that the lowermost area of the precentral gyrus will have the lips uh, represented, then the tongue, then comes the face. Then the upper limb has the larger area in that the hand portion it is having the larger area of representation. Then comes the trunk and the lower limb till the knee. This is the homunculus on the superolateral surface. When coming on to the medial surface, here in the paracentral lobule surrounding the central uh, sulcus here, central sulcus of Rolando. Here this is the paracentral lobule on the medial surface. So the anterior portion of the paracentral lobule will show the motor area representing the uh, lower limb below the knee as well as the uh, micturition and defecation organs. So that is represented in the anterior part of the paracentral lobule. Okay, that one. Then uh, any uh, So here the contralateral uh, half of the body, all the muscles are represented in this. So this uh, any ablation or any injury to this uh, precentral gyrus, it will result in the contralateral spastic hemiplegia, this one. But the laryngeal, pharynx, the tongue muscles, because they have bilateral representation, they will not show the uh, paralysis. Rest of the body muscles, they will show the paralysis in the contralateral half when the precentral gyrus is involved having the Broadman area number 4. Next comes the premotor area, area number 6. It is present in the posterior parts of the superior, middle and inferior frontal gyri. All the posterior part of these three gyri will show the premotor area. So here all the extra pyramidal fibers will arise from here and the main function of this is the planning of the movements and also controlling the movements in action. So planning of the movements and controlling the movements in action is represented in this premotor area whereas execution of that movements is in the area number 4 which is the primary motor area. This is the premotor area. Then there is area number 8 which is present in the posterior part of the middle frontal gyrus area number 8. This is the frontal eye field. 
so here there is a representation of voluntary conjugate movements of the eyes that means when a person want to see on one side with the both eyes that voluntary movement is controlled in the area number 8 called as frontal eye field then comes the area number 9 10 11 12 these four numbers broadman numbers which are seen uh, on the superior lateral surface as well as they extend on to the medial frontal lobe also this area is called as prefrontal cortex so prefrontal cortex here it is uh, representing the personality of an individual his judgment his morals his ethics uh, all these are represented in this prefrontal cortex so um uh, judgment of, of in a situation like how to react in a situation uh, how to behave uh, in certain conditions all that is represented in this so any damage to this prefrontal cortex it will uh, result in the um judgmental behavior like the person cannot uh, judge like what how to react in what situation um his language uh, will be altered his uh, behavior will be altered and um, obscene language is used like urinating uh, in the public the, his behavior is changed everything is situated in this prefrontal cortex so these are the motor areas and one more important motor area seen in the inferior frontal gyrus is area number 44 and 45 this is called as motor speech area it is connected to the uh, this is the primary motor area so here the lips tongue larynx pharynx the facial muscles here they are all represented in this the broca speech area is connected to this primary motor area so broca speech area is the one wherein the muscles involved in the production of the speech that is expressive speech is uh, situated in this broca's area so any damage to this uh, area the person will not be able to speak though he can understand though he knows what to speak and he can answer by writing but he cannot have that expressive speech so this happens when there is damage to this area 45 44 motor speech area and uh, the condition is called as motor aphasia when this area is affected next one is the so these were all the motor areas now coming to the sensory areas sensory areas uh, basically behind the central sulcus this is the central sulcus so behind the central sulcus this is called as the post central gyrus post central gyrus shows area 3 12 which is the primary sensory area and area number 5 and 7 they represent the association areas so primary sensory area it is concerned again it receives afferents from the uh, ventro postro medial and ventro postro lateral uh, nuclei of the thalamus and all the sensations from the body both exteroceptive and proprioceptive exteroceptive like pain touch temperature and proprioceptive like joint sense muscle sense vibration sense all those sensations are um, represented in this area number 312 which is present in post central gyrus so any um, damage to this um, uh, post central gyrus that may result in loss of all the uh, sensations but uh, deep touch crude touch uh, severe pain and all uh, may be uh, retained a little um, earlier those um, sensations after the treatment they can be retained a little bit faster so that is area number 312 post central gyrus now coming to the area number 5 and 7 these two are present in the superior parietal lobule superior parietal lobule association areas 5 and 7 so here uh, the ability to identify an object by touching it the texture the size the shape of it everything is represented in this 5 and 7 so the ability to identify an object without seeing it just by feeling it it is called as stereognosis 
so any damage to this area 5 and 7 it results in a stereognosis that is uh, with your closed eyes you will not be able to identify uh, any object which you have already seen and felt in uh, past but that uh, memory it is lost and the person will not be able to identify the object in darkness or with closed eyes that is called as a stereognosis 5 and 7 then uh, in the inferior parietal lobule this is inferior parietal lobule we have the supramarginal gyrus and angular gyrus angular gyrus represents area 39 and supramarginal represents area 40 these two along with area 22 which is present in the posterior part of the superior temporal gyrus they are called as the sensory speech area this area is called as sensory speech area so here in this the interpretation of the written and spoken language so written and spoken that means the visual input as well as the auditory input in these three areas so written and spoken language is being interpreted and understood uh, in this sensory speech area so the person uh, when he is asked something he understands the question and he will be able to reply by interpreting in this sensory speech area so this sensory speech area when it is damaged it results in the inability to understand though the person is trained in particular language uh, though he knows what is written uh, what is he seeing but he will not be able to interpret it but he will be able to speak uh, speak because of the um, intact broca's area so his response will be irrelevant uh, to the question asked his response will be irrelevant he can speak but he cannot interpret what is being asked so this is called as sensory aphasia this is motor aphasia when broca's area is involved this area it is called as wernicke's area or sensory speech area so any damage to this area uh, the person will not be able to interpret the written or spoken language then this sensory speech area is connected to the Broca's area by the association fibers called as arcuate fasciculus so that arcuate fasciculus is connecting the sensory speech area to the Broca's area so any damage to this arcuate fasciculus there will be no conduction of the impulse from the sensory to the speech so that aphasia is called as conduction aphasia that is called conduction aphasia sensory aphasia motor aphasia when the communication between these two is lost it is called as uh, conduction aphasia and when both Broca's area as well as the sensory speech area are damaged that kind of aphasia is called as global aphasia so this is the sensory speech area one more uh, sensation here it will be the lower part the lower end of this post central gyrus we will see the gustatory area area number 43 again here uh, the lips and tongues are represented here even in the um, sensory area also primary sensory area the body is represented upside down the sensory homunculus so here the lips and tongue are being uh, situated so the taste sensation is present in this lower end of the post central gyrus so these are the sensory areas present in the parietal lobe now coming to the auditory area area number 41 and 42 so here if you see this is uh, I am holding the temporal lobe and just reflecting the lateral sulcus. So this surface which is exposed it is the superior surface of the superior temporal gyrus this one. So here we will see an anterior temporal gyrus called as Heschel's gyrus. Here I will try to show it in this here <coughs> okay. So this gyrus is called as anterior temporal gyrus or Heschel's gyrus and this is where the primary auditory area is situated area number 41 and 42 this one okay. So this is the one here the primary auditory area and auditory association is area number 22 we have already seen in the sensory speech area. 
so here in the primary auditory area the loudness of the voice the quality of the voice the pitch of the voice and the source of the voice all these can be interpreted in this primary auditory area and in the association area uh, all the association areas for that matter like the motor association sensory association uh, auditory association and visual association all these areas they will have the past memory by which the person will be able to recognize a voice or recognize a person or identify a touch all these are because of the association areas so here association area is area number 22 area number 41 and 42 are the primary auditory area uh, in this association area the person will be able to recognize the voice of a particular person like his friend or like his parents he will be able to recognize the voice without seeing them only because of this association areas so to lead a normal life association areas play a major role otherwise whatever the voice he hears it will be a new one to him every time he hears that and with this past memory like in the 22 he can identify the voice coming out of uh, the sound coming out of the musical instruments he can identify whether it's a violin guitar anything if he has heard it earlier he will be able to recognize because of this association areas so association areas are more important now coming to the occipital lobe the sensory areas in the occipital lobe this is the cerebellum here so occipital lobe around the calcarine sulcus they will have the uh, the occipital cortex is very thin cortex is the outer portion which is having all the six layers the occipital cortex is uh, the visual cortex is specially named as striate cortex because of the prominent external bands of bilarger these striations are seen when the occipital cortex is observed under microscope so that's why it is named as striate cortex and these stria are specially named as stria of genari that is because of the prominent bands of bilarger so uh, visual area number 17 is the primary one then 18 and 19 are the association areas so visual area will get uh, information from the lateral geniculate body which again uh, in turn receives uh, impulses uh, stimulus from the retina so that is uh, how the visual, the image is processed then the memory of that image is stored within 18 and 19 so that next time the person sees the same object or same image he will be able to identify it because of the past memory situated in area 18 and 19 but actual interpretation is in area number 17 so this is the visual cortex which receives inputs from the lateral geniculate body and the optic radiation and all the auditory area will receive inputs from the medial geniculate body which in turn receives uh, uh, information from the organ of corti so that he can uh, interpret the sounds so this is auditory this is visual this is sensory uh, parietal lobe and motor in the frontal lobe these are the functional areas that we'll see uh, one more thing that we'll see in the post central gyrus is the vestibular area the place where the face is represented in the post central gyrus it is having the vestibular area okay then one more uh, area is the olfactory area so this is where the olfactory sulcus was present so here including the uncle region this is the uncle region of the temporal lobe so in this area we will see the area of smell or olfactory area these are the basic functional areas uh, seen in the cerebral hemisphere